What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another video for you guys today. Today we are going to be looking at Fabio Paratici, the incoming director of football. Uh, music to our ears as Daniel Levy has said that, well he hasn't said it, but it's been reported that he is going to take a step back from the footballing sides and uh, hand it over to Fabio Paratici. It is a bit little too late, but uh, better late than never as they say. Yeah, look, we need, we everyone knows Levy needs us to take a step back from footballing decisions and reportedly that that's um, the plan going into next season. So hopefully Paratici can have more of an influence. We know um, what a great record he has at Juventus um, since he uh, took uh, since he was director of football there. So I think it's a positive step. Mm. It's definitely a step in the right direction. And um, I, I'm hoping he, um, he can lead to some positivity, although it's been such a glum um, past couple of weeks in the managerial search. But I think Paratici can be a glimmer of hope. Yeah, um, and what we're going to be looking at today is Paratici's top 10 bargain signings for Juventus. And there are a lot of big names on this, aren't there? So um, it's something to get excited about. And let's start off with the first one, and that is Leonardo Bonucci, signed for 13 million in 2010. And what a signing he was. Yeah, signing him from Barry. He was actually formerly of uh, Inter Milan. He came through their youth system. They stole him at a fairly young age. Um, but clearly, um, Paratici saw something in him uh, when he joined he, he was one of his first signings when he joined Juventus that centre back and he was a young centre back back then but what a centre back he's turned out to be um, for Juventus and for Italy as well one of the top centre backs in Europe um, in his prime and he's still going strong right now for Juventus so despite taking a one year uh, sabbatical, sabbatical yeah. at AC Milan exactly um, but look that was he's been a great find they signed him really really cheap and what a find he was and I saw rumours as well that he's going to be uh, Tottenham's first signing as well <laughs> 35 yeah, year old Manucci. bring him in bring him in um but let's look at the next a player is arturo vidal signed in 2011 for a fee of 11 million mm. what a signing what a player as well mm. i know he obviously did well with uh, leverkusen um, which clearly caught the eye of paratici but when he signed for juventus i don't think he's ever been as good as when he was at juventus True. since even when at bayern and barcelona mm -hmm. and i agree whatnot, with that. i think his prime his best football is definitely at juventus and he was one of the best defensive mids in the in in the Europe, but not only that, he regularly contributed to goals and assists as well, and was a big part of that team that reached um, two Champions League finals in three years, and obviously helped dominate um, Serie A for many many years. And he was um, him partnering Paolo and Pogba um, was an unbelievable um, central midfielder, and he was a really great find as well for a, also a modest price. Yeah, absolutely astonishing footballer with an absolute rocket of a shot. I mean, mm. he was so tough in the middle there. He was just a he was one of the most perfect central midfielders when he was at Juventus uh, but talking about perfect central midfielders the next guy we're going to be talking mm. about is the perfect central midfielder and that is Andrea Pirlo signed from in 2011 on a free um, and there's once we get into it there's going to be a lot of free transfers in this list mm -hmm. but Andrea Pirlo probably tops the lot yeah and it's, it's easy to forget that when they signed him, you know, AC Milan released him because they thought he wasn't kind of good enough anymore and he kind of passed his peak. But when he signed for Juventus, clearly they saw something, how they could use him in a different way. And they were champions um, as well, Milan. They were. And then they... they, they they um, willingly got rid of him. It wasn't like there was a struggle. Perlo left uh, because they felt like he he was past his best. But he actually not only did he have a renaissance to Juventus, I think he played his best football at Juventus. Yeah, he I might have been he might have been his best ever. I mean, he left Milan, a title winning Milan, and then he goes to uh, Juventus is under Conte as well. Yeah, he went to Juventus under Conte. And like you say, playing the best football of his career and uh, regains a league for Juventus, which they hadn't won in quite a long time. Yeah. And uh, that started the kind of Juventus dominance that we saw in Serie A. Yeah, and he, and they, he kind of played this... Um quarterback kind of role um, in the team where he was just sitting there just pinging past his left, right and centre and people thought he would, people thought he was past it but then within a couple of years he was starting again for Italy he was starring in the Euros and he was um, he was being um, he was being an unbelievable footballer and I think Paratici maybe saw something that Milan were missing when they when they decided to uh, not extend his contract the way Pirlo could ping a pass that was like the definition of sexy football yeah, wasn't literally, it? literally the federal of football yeah, yeah. Um, let's move on to the next guy 2012 Paul Pogba signed on a free from Manchester United and then got sold to Manchester <laughs> United for a, for a massive massive fee um, but obviously 
I think as well with Pogba, I think he played his best football at Juventus. Definitely. He hasn't been able to kind of recapture how good he was. Although he's been decent for United, he hasn't been quite hit the heights of when he was at Juventus. And uh, that midfielder, three of Perlo, Vidal and Pogba, all yeah. signed by Paratici. And they've all, um, they're all incredible together. And Pogba as well, he had that... Um, third midfielder role completely knocked down he like he wasn't just an attacker defensive midfielder he was kind of all over the place mm. creating he was um closing people down he was the he was the perfect midfielder the at, amount um, of Juventus. bangers he used to score oh my god his shots from outside the box are worldies absolute worldies and um you know, Man United couldn't couldn't keep him. Although uh, reportedly Silas Ferguson wanted to keep him, they they weren't using him. And when when they when he signed for Juventus, he pretty much straight away um, got into the first team. He straight away would start to use him, and um, it, that shows that uh, they they saw in Pogba when maybe what United um, didn't quite see at the time when they, when they decided to allow him to leave on a free. Mm. And because because I remember there was the, he said the straw that broke the camel's back is when uh, I think Skulls and one of centre mid was injured and they played like um, I think they played they said like Raphael or something in yeah. centre mid or something like that and he was like okay I need to leave if they're not going to use me and then he went to Juventus straight away he was in the team mm. and they saw they saw the potential in him and he became a world record fee holder. Yep. Uh, let's move on to the next, and we're going to be looking at Carlos Tevez, a fee of eight million of, in 2013 mm. from Manchester City. Brilliant player, and another one where at Man City he was um, he, he was obviously done, he done a brilliant job at Man City, but uh, he had his problems there, and he was he was on the wrong side of thirty. And you're thinking, is he going to go back to Argentina or something? Is he is his career over? But when he signed for Juventus, had an absolutely brilliant season brilliant a uh, couple years there at Juventus and um helped them um get to Champions League finals as well and another, another brilliant signing on a, for a very very cheap fee for a class player yeah so obviously it was all down to his uh, him going head to head with Roberto Mancini at Man City mm -hmm. um but I think that everyone would agree that his transfer to Juventus worked out um a really big success for them um as Absolutely. as like I said before you know that's the kind of time where they I think they were about two or three years into their dominance, but they claimed what the title for seven, eight years in a row or something. So uh, they were a mass. All these signings were a massive part of that. Um, we're getting into the last uh, five now, and the next one is Kingsley Coman, signed on a free in 2014. I mean, probably didn't play his best football at Juventus, but mm. I think that definitely he was definitely good for Juventus. But I think when he moved to to Bayern, I think that's when he really started to perform. Yeah, it's more to, I, I don't think um, they got the best time at Juve and probably let him go too quickly, seeing as how well he's doing right now at Bayern, you know, scoring the winner of the Champions League final and stuff like that. He's clearly an unbelievable talent. But um, they didn't quite see the best of him at Juve, but clearly snapping up on a free, they knew how good of a player he could be. And yeah. um, they did sell him for fairly big money to Bayern Munich, so they definitely made a massive profit there. And I think snapping up a player, keep getting... Um, um, seeing spotting the talent of Kingsley Coman on, to get him on a free is definitely something to be commended. Yeah, and you know PSG will probably be kicking themselves letting him go. So just like yeah. that, mm -hmm. just completely just like that, just literally just disregarded him. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on. Sammy Kadira on a free 2015 from Real Madrid. Another an another one. He loves his free transfers, Paratici, and you very definitely do um, over the years. And he's another one um, who was a big player for in the German national team. Madrid were kind of um, letting him go because he'd served his purpose there. And another one that Juve definitely snapped up before the competition and he did a fantastic job for, him, for them for a couple of years. And they yeah. a really strong centre mid. Yeah, I mean... When when they let him go, Sammy Kadira, everyone thought he was on his way out. But then mm. he did. I think he was in there for about two or three years as a starter mm -hmm. for Sammy Kadira, and I think that um, that move to Juventus really, really helped him out. Really helped him out because he was on his way out at Real Madrid. It's definitely a um, um, it's definitely a pattern of players who other clubs are discarding because they either don't think they're good enough or they or they think they're over the hill. And then Juventus Paratici seeing something in them, and then him signing them, then becoming a big big bias for Juve but you know it all it all needs everything to work in in motion you know like cogs turning because mm -hmm. you don't just need the director of football to spot these talents you need the manager mm -hmm. to make it work as well 
Um, but now that we're getting into the last three now, the next one we're going to be talking about is Dani Alves um, on a free from Barcelona in 2016. Another one, um, you know, actually when he left Barcelona, he actually had a really good season for Barca that yeah, year. Yeah, true. Um, and he wasn't really on his way out, but Barca just wanted to kind of freshen it up, get a, a younger player in there. But I think Dani Alves, when he left Barcelona to Juventus, he was still the best right back in the world. He was definitely, he was definitely up there, but he had a brilliant year with Juventus as well. He was absolutely, he was only here for one year, but he was absolutely fantastic for them. And uh, they got to the Champions League final that year, losing to Madrid in, in the final. And he was one of their stars in the lead up to that final. So, so I, although he was only there for a year, he made a massive, massive impact. And, um, you know, it would be easy to turn your nose up at like a 33, 34 year old Danny Alves at the time. But Paratici didn't, Juventus didn't, and they earn, and they earn, they got their Champions League final because of it. All right, second to last now, we're going to look at Emre Chan, signed on a free in 2018 from Liverpool. Mm. And he's, he's one who actually more, he more forced, I think Liverpool offered him a contract and he said, no, I want to leave on a free. And, and, uh, Similar to Georgie Wijnaldum. Yeah, and um, they, they snapped him up, Emre Chan. He's done, he's done a decent job for him. I know I, he's left now, he's at uh, Dortmund, um, but they did make a good profit on him. They got a lot of money for him after uh, snapping him on, up on a free. So another good signing uh, uh, for Juve there. Mm. And last but not least, we're going to look at Demi Rao, mm. signed for 16 million, 2019. Obviously, st uh, still at Juventus right now. And we're linked with him this summer. But I think he's a top centre-back, still very young. And um, I think he can grow into an even better centre-back than he is. Yeah, it's a shame he suffered, a, I think, last year or a couple of years ago from a very serious injury, which uh, ruled him out for a, for a long time. But he is de he's definitely one of the best young centre-backs around at the, at the moment. And they got him for a very modest fee from Sassuolo for about 16 million. And um, he's definitely, if give him time to develop, he's going to be one of the top centre-backs. And the only reason Juventus would consider letting him go is whether they think these injury problems are going to follow him around his career. Because unfortunately, he's been hampered with them in recent seasons. But in terms of quality, they really did find a gem there in, in mm. Demoral. Completely agree. Uh, but that is it. That is the top 10 Paratici bargains for Juventus that we're looking at today. Uh, let me just recap for you guys. So first of all, we had a look at 2010 Leonardo Bonucci for 13 million. Then we went over to 2000. 2011 Arturo Fidal for 11 million then 2011 uh, uh, Pirlo on a free 2012 Pogba on a free 2013 Carlos Tevez for 30 for 8 million 2014 Kingsley Coman on a free 2015 Sammy Kadira on a free 2016 Danny Alves on a free and then Emre Chan on a free in 2018 and 2019 it's Demi Rao for 16 million I mean the free transfers there mm. Daniel Lee will be licking his <laughs> lips won't he uh, just to know, Ramsey on 400k, 400k a week didn't quite make it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> didn't quite. Free make transfer it. though, 400k. A week, I, think I think he's been he's been plagued with injuries, hasn't he, Ram yeah, and Ramsey? 400k a week, man, yeah, that was mad. ridiculous. What are they doing? It is mad. But, <laughs> well, that's one but, thing I'm thinking. Oh. Yeah, and what about uh, <laughs> Gonzalo Higuain for 81 million? That's not quite making it either. <laughs> <laughs> we can made, maybe do next one top 10 times he overpaid for players. Yeah, <laughs> but look, um, that is our top 10 um, Paratici list. But let me know in the comment section below if there anyone you would like to add to that list. And also just give me a bit of review of that list and how excited are you for Fabio Paratici to join Tottenham Hotspur. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.